I know you're wondering whether this is actually working at all, but um, this is the part. I, I know I say this like every time. This is something I say like every time, but this is the part where I go and I take a look at the Chromebook that's sitting over here, which is like to my right, whatever this looks like on the uh, screen there. And I find out, there you go, it's working. It's working now. I know that I have audio, which makes me feel a whole heck of a lot better. <clears throat> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cooking with Linux Without a Net. I'm Marcel Gagne. If you are here, if you are here live, and uh, and I know that some people, you know, come in as time goes on and so forth, but um, I'm going to go in over there and type and type. All right, first of all, Rodolfo, thank you very much for telling me that it's working. It's good to know. <laughs> you know, I, I, I take my best shot. I start the show and then I go and check to make sure that it's actually working properly. Okay, so today, today, let's start off with, uh, oh, I know what I should do. I know what I should do. I should open up. I should open up a console and uh, I should go to recordings. And I should go M player dash FS because I love doing this CWL intro. And then, uh, and then of course I have to transition away from my full screen face because otherwise it'll cover it. And then I do this and then I do this. Wow, that's loud. <laughs> That's really loud. Wow. Holy cow. Okay. Anyway, uh, shall we start with rumors? Shall we start with rumors? Um, I, you know, I just, nah, let's not start with rumors. Let's, let's go immediately into today's topic, shall we? Which means I got to get rid of the face here again. So um, I'll see you in a little while. Okay. All right. Let's take that down. Let's take that down. So today, today, whoops, uh, hang on a second here. There we go. So today we are going to go to something uh, something pretty mundane. Uh, we're going to do the typical Linux distribution you've never heard of before. Damon I! Damon, nice to see you. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Good to have you on board. Thank you for coming. All right. So today we're going to do like the, the uh, you know, the classic uh, Linux distribution you've never heard of. But we're going to go and take a look at system monitoring tools, which doesn't sound like a lot of fun, but can actually be quite interesting. Again, if you're in the channel. Oh, by the way. Um, Cheers, about the santé, bon appétit. I'm drinking a, uh, I'm drinking white today. I mean, I'm typically drinking a red here on the show, but today I'm drinking a Chardonnay, so. And um, it's just, it's your basic California Chardonnay. It's actually, it's nice, it's nice. It, it, it works for me today. This is what I'm going for. All right, so the classic, the classic, I mean, like right now I've got a graphical system monitor on the system and this one is, is. Um, is interesting. Yes, I'm in Kitchener Waterloo, in case you were wondering. And it's 19.2 degrees Celsius outside right now. 19.2 degrees Celsius. And it's raining. It's been raining all day. We're supposed to have thunderstorms later today. Isn't that exciting? I'm starting to get, um, you know, I'm digressing here a little bit, but I'm starting to get, uh, starting to feel kind of down about the idea that it's September 25th and I'm going to have to close my pool soon. I am just not, I'm still wearing shorts. And a short sleeve shirt, you know, I'm just not ready to give in yet. But anyway, here we go. Okay, so this is K Guard. This is actually the system monitor that comes with uh, KDE. Um, once upon a time, you used to be able to, to get it just by uh, by uh, clicking the system there. But there are all sorts of system monitors. If I go system monitor, system monitoring tools, there are all sorts of interesting things that are in there um, that exist on the system. But the classic. The classic, let's start with this classic and open up a, uh, a terminal window, shall we? This actually, no, the classic is not, I was gonna start with top, but that's not the classic. The classic is this one here, uh, not you name. <laughs> uptime, uptime is the classic, uptime is the classic. And if I go over here um, and I go over to, uh, let me see here, uh, uh, CD and I go uh, uptime, um, this looks a little tiny bit more interesting because I've got a server that's been up for 96 days. And this one actually is like really, really the basics, okay? There's one user logged in, officially logged in, that's me. That's because this is a web server. And uh, honestly, there shouldn't be anybody else logged into this thing except for me. But there you go, one user logged in, load average 0.31. 
The first number that you see up there is 0.31. That's over a five minute average. Okay, so that's why it's called the load average as opposed to, you know, the load at this very instant. Um, 0.32 um, processes running at any given moment uh, over a 10 minute period. That would be the 10 minute period in the middle there. And uh, then Korea, good to see you. Welcome, dude. Welcome. Nice to have you on board. Glad to have you back. Um, and the last one here is over the course of 15 minutes. So this is actually kind of interesting because, I mean, if you were to do something like this, like, oh, let's go watch um, uptime. And whoops, let me see. Watch uptime. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, I can't do that one right now. All right, so there we go. So if we go watch uptime, we can actually, th this thing will uh, watch actually. If you don't know about watch, okay, watch is an interesting little command that will every 10 minutes basically redo the command so that you can watch changes over time. And you can actually specify uh, with watch. So if I go uh, watch dash H, um, you take a look at it, you can actually change the amount of time. So you can say that the intervals, that would be the N there. Uh, you could say that I want this thing to update. So let's go control C here and go watch dash N and we'll have it update every three seconds. Okay. Um, oh, oh, and there's another interesting things in there, which is um, dash. Uh, let me see. We don't want to do dash color, which is the one. Uh, ta -da -ta -da -ta -da. Uh, there's output version information. That's not what we want. Dash beep dash color. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm mixing it here, but anyway, dash three, and then I go up time. So there we go. So now this thing will update every three seconds and every three seconds, we'll be able to get an update on uh, the uh, resources that are being used up in the system at the moment. So there we go. 50, this should go to 53. There we go. It should go to 56 over here. See it over on the right here. Like I'm going to highlight that. See 56, 59. There we go. So we're counting by three because I told watch to use three second intervals on this. So this is like the classic basic, um, what about this one here? Let's see, yeah, uptime, should be just me on here as well. There we go, 119 days. This one's been up even longer. This is, uh, in case you're wondering, this is my kid's Minecraft server. I set up a, uh, a uh, Linux-based Minecraft server for my son so that he can invite his friends to go play with him. Yeah, I'm that kind of a dad. I set up servers specifically and only for my kid. I do a video about it too. I actually did a video on how to set up this Minecraft server, but I digress. Okay, so the other one that we can use, so if I go back to, uh, let's go back to this window over here for a second here. And um, the other classic that we can use is this one here. And I'm actually gonna stretch out this window here because uh, I want you to, I want you to see this a little bit bigger here. Okay, there we go. So top is the other, is, is, is the next in our list of classic system monitors. And um, this one is, this one obviously shows you a lot more information. And if you do something like type H here in the middle of it, it's going to bring up a help screen that will show you how you can toggle specific views, uh, you know, uh, whether you are looking for, um, you know, specifically processes, specifically for a particular user. Like if you take a look down here, see where it goes, uh, you over here filter by a specific user. Um, you can do that as well. Um, there are a lot of ways to change uh, the way that top displays information. And I'm just going to hit escape there to go back into it. And if I were to say user, I could say just M. Gagne. And then that way I only see the processes that are associated with me. Um, I can change it so that it's sorted by uh, whether it's sorted by the amount of resident memory, virtual memory that's being used, as specific processes to watch, that sort of thing. There's a lot that you can do with it. And if you don't like using H, you can also use the question mark. Question mark works just as well as using the H. See, press H or question mark for help with it. All right, I'm going to take a look over there. Uh, hang on, I'm going to take a sip here. Here's to all of you. Ah. Uh, it's one of the things that's fun about doing this is it gives me an excuse to drink wine at lunchtime once a week. That, you know, some could argue that that's, uh, that's the real reason that I do this. And, and if we go back, um, did I have the, uh, sys and of course, if we take a look at the KSysGuard window over here, see, let's go back and take a look at this one here. Let's bring top over here. Uh, in fact, let's go close this window over here. And I'm going to just go control D here and then go back to this one. And if you really have a look at it here, um, 
there's our there's our process table, which is basically what we're seeing here in top. And uh, of course, a nice graphical representation of uh, you know what the system is doing. Uh, there's my network traffic, a memory and swap. Obviously, we do not swap a whole heck of a lot. That's because we got 12 gig of RAM on the server here. Uh, I'd like to think that <laughs> for the most part, we don't have to swap out an awful lot. And there's my process and there's my uh, various CPUs over there. Um, and um, this is actually pretty neat. Now, top is on every, like it's gonna be on every system, just obviously as is uptime. And if you're not dealing in a graphical window, um, you might wanna use something a little bit different, especially if you're trying to highlight specific things. Now, one of my other favorite ones is called HTOP. HTOP, um, and I don't know what the H stands for. I always thought of it as human, you know, more human top, but you know, who knows what H top? I know, I know, I know, I know. Marcel, you could just use, look at the man page. Uh, I know that's what you're telling me here. Marcel, you could look at the man page. All right, fine, fine. Man, H top, what does H top stand for? Interactive pro, this doesn't, mean, doesn't stand for anything. Doesn't, I like my version better. You know, a more human top, there we go. Uh, human top, even though apparently that's really not what it stands for. There you go. And this one's actually a little bit more interesting because you actually get a graphical and a visual uh, representation of uh, CPU load as well as memory. And um, I, I love this one, actually. This is actually one of my favorite. This is uh, something that I, I think on pretty much every server that I work on, that I do work for, uh, I will install HTOP and I will do it like almost as a matter of course. Um, I could just bring up top, but I find that it's a heck of a lot easier to to see things. Things will jump out at you better when you take a look at them um, through uh, HTOP versus uh, just plain old top. Okay, let's take a look. Here's, here's another one. Here's another one that I really like. Glances. Glances is sort of like top. It's sort of like HTOP, but... Um, it's, it's a much bigger, brighter view into the system. Things are ordered um, things are ordered quite differently. They're highlighted differently. You can, uh, it's, I, I mean, I even, like the, I even like what it's called, you know, the idea of glances. You get a big graphical glance into the system and how it works. Take a look at that, take a look at that. Isn't that lovely? CPU, memory, it's all just, it, it all just jumps out at you if you've got something which is, particularly interesting for whatever reason here, you know, the seven gig use, that jumps out at you with, uh, um, with uh, you know, color coding on various things. Excuse me. Do we see, oh, and there, there we go. There's our sensors down there. I was gonna say LM sensors is installed on this notebook, which of course means we can see the, um, the temperature of the processors. There we go, right down here. See, there's the temperature of our, of our processors, core one, core two. Uh, in case you're wondering, this is actually an Acer Aspire E17, which uh, has uh, an Intel Core i5 at 2.8 gigahertz. Just in case you're curious, uh, from the HTOP webpage, what does the H in HTOP stand for? Yes, I did receive emails about this. Well, the short explanation is it stands for Hisham. Oh, well, I'll be darned. I never knew that. Apparently, I didn't... Uh, Thanks, Rodolfo. Apparently, I never actually read the page that deeply, so I didn't know. I didn't know. All right. Hey, Hishan. It's, uh, I, I like your process monitor. I use it on a regular basis. I don't always use glances. It's interesting because I kind of forget that glances exist, but it's definitely one of the ones that I, that I do use and I do install from time to time, and, um, and, uh, there it is. Let me see. Let's. Th there's another one that I used to use. Oh, there we go. Let's let's install this, shall we? Let's sudo apt install a top. A top actually stands for advanced top. So let's let's. Oh, there it is. There it is. It's actually in there. So it's gonna happen. Let's take a look at this one. Oh, and in case you didn't already know this, all right. And I'm sure you knew this, but uh, let's. Um, uh, one of the things you can do in top. Um, is kill a process. See, you can actually kill a process with it. But we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Anyway, let's take a look at ATOP, shall we? ATOP, advanced top. Yet another way to take a look at your system. By the way, if you're going to pin me to the, um, it's it's on the web page. Oh, it's it's not in it's not in the man page. All right, well, good to know, Rodolfo. Um, if you were to try to pin me down and say, dude, you must pick one that you like over the others. Um, it would be actually kind of hard for me to say because um, strictly because I 
don't know. I mean, one is going to show you information differently than the other. And you may find, and in fact, this is actually one of the good reasons for trying out some of these things, is um, you may decide that one works better for you than another, or you may like the way that information is displayed better than another. But like I said, if you had to pin me down, I would have to say that it's the one that I use most often, which is HTOP. That's the one that I keep going back to, despite the fact that there are a lot of them and some of them are really insanely cool. They actually are. Let me, uh, let me go to uh, one of the other things that I've got here. Okay, this, this, is, the, this is the web server over here. So let's, um, let's go clear here and I'm gonna go uh, my top. There's another top that's interesting. And my top is actually a, um, it's a MySQL. Uh, system processor to find out, uh, you know, to take a look at database access and uh, see what's what's working and how it's working and, uh, you know, whether particular databases are being accessed more often than others. So this is actually what this one is for, this one here. Uh, Apache Top is another one which you might want. Oh, apt install Apache Top. Mm -hmm. Apt install Apache Top. Don't you just love it? I See? This is, this is why this is called without a net, because Zita, good afternoon, good to have you here. Welcome, welcome. I, I raise my glass of wine to you. I toast you. I toast you all, as a matter of fact. Um, anyway, Apache Top. Let's do Apache Top. Apache Top. There we go. Apparently the websites uh, that are running, oh, there we go. There's a... There's a the, the websites are not getting an awful lot of, uh, somebody's trying to access something interesting here. We may have to go and take a look at that. Uh, but obviously there's not a whole heck of a lot happening, in a, uh, happening on that server at the moment. Let's take a look at, let's take a look at, uh, let me see, what's another one? There is, uh, there was one that I'm, I'm trying to, I'm mentally going back over my list of process monsters, IOTOP. Operation not permitted, no, requires, oh, okay, let's try that, sudo. Uh, actually, let's just let's just open up a, a window that's already sudo, shall we? sudo dash i s e t r e t. What? Oh, there we go. That's much better. All right. Um, I O top. I O top. Let's take a look at I O top. And uh, this one is concentrating specifically on. Uh, disks reads and writes more than anything else so there there are like tons of them out there like um and and i, I mean i cannot remember them all but so many of them use top in their names um uh, da -da 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 linux link tech show holy cow that was ages ago zeta zeta gnu that was that was like a million years ago i i remember fondly the um the Linux Link Tech Show. I'm not, I'm not sure whether it still exists, but um, perhaps somebody could set me straight on that one here. What's another one? Uh, there was IF Top, which was a, um, oh, let's, let's find it. <laughs> ah, that's, this is hilarious. Um, IF Top, let's see, let's see what IF Top looks like these days. IF Top was, as you might probably expect, uh, strictly related to network traffic. Okay, so we are specifically interested in uh, network traffic. Uh, transmit cumulative. Do I have to man IF top? Do I have to actually sp specify an interface? Can I not say listen to all interfaces? Uh, print a summary of usage. Do not do uh, blah, 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 turn off display, yada, yada, yada. Uh, listen to packets on interface. You have to specify the interface. All right, let's do that. Let's go. Um, uh, I have config just to find out here uh, and uh, 192 okay so let's listen on that one then so I F top dash I W L P three S zero all right let's take a look there we go there we go we've actually got some actual traffic happening here um, there we go cool cool well isn't this interesting <laughs> Uh, some of these I recognize, obviously, but test Wi-Fi dot here. Test Wi-Fi. What the heck is test Wi-Fi dot here? Uh, free node. That one makes sense because I'm connected through. Um, uh, let's go over here. See, you can you can discover all sorts of fascinating things. There we go. So there's our there's our Linux uh, there's our Linux journal 
um, IRC channel over here. Today is Tuesday. Yes, it is. Burn it all down. Burn it all down. What the heck is that? Pronto. This this guy is like you know, this guy Pronto. He's got a he's he's he's. I don't know. What do we got? We got Amazon, AWS, uh, Google Homeland. Yes, I do have a Google Homeland here. Um, this is very interesting. Um, wonder. Um, hmm. Okay, I'll have to look at this later. <laughs> I'll have to look at this a little bit later because, you know, this is really kind of interesting. I haven't looked at this one in a long, long time. So uh, apparently there is information here that I should be paying some attention to. Um, oh, man, what else is there? Um, oh, I mean, there, oh, yeah, yeah. There, there are tons of these things. Uh, one of them, which, which I find a little bit difficult to work with because you got to set up the, uh, the screen for it. And, oh, uh, I've, I've, lost my, I've lost my widget. I've gone and closed my widget, uh, my weather widget over here. All right, um, but there are, let me see, I, there are, for instance, like a whole bunch of widgets that you can install for the desktop. And let's say download new Plasma widget. And there's one that I kind of like called Simple Monitor, I think is what it's called. Um, simple System Monitor. Oh, it's already installed. Sist simple System Monitor. All right, let's close that and let's bring that one up. You've uh, Some of you who have looked at some of my older videos will actually remember this one. Uh, whoops, that's not what I want. I want to add it as a widget, widget and uh, system load viewer. Hmm, monitor. Hmm, let's take a look at some of these, shall we? Let's take a look at this one here. It's not CP load monitor, it's not memory status. Uh, is it system load viewer? Oh, let's take a look at that. Is that the one? No, that's not it. It's not network monitor. No, that's not it either. Uh, is it uh, CPU load monitor? No, that's not it. Uh, let me see, um, network monitor, memory status, um, it's this, I'm, I'm not seeing it, uh, memory status, system load monitor, is this the one? Uh, system load viewer settings, uh, ta -da -ta -da, circular, let's go with circular, um, let's go with, um, I don't know, cache monitor as well, apply, no, that's not it, that's not the one I'm thinking of. Uh, let's go add widgets. Where is it? Simple. Simple. No, that's not it. Uh, system. System load viewer. Is that the one? System load viewer. No, that's not it. I just that's the one that I just uh, tried. Oh, come on, dude, dude. Which one is it? Uh, process. Process. Huh. Money monitor. System I.O. Uh, network monitor. I, I don't know. I don't know where it is. This is terrible. System load monitor. No, that's not it. I just uh, removed this one. It's, it's, that's like this one over here. Um, memory status. I have no idea where it is. I have no idea where it is. Network monitor, system load viewer. That's this thing over here. Uh, I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is because it's, it's really cool and I like it and I cannot remember what it is. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize, and I'm getting, I'm getting totally and horribly distracted. But the other one I wanted to show you was Alt F2, Conky. Conky is another one which, um, Conky, Conky, where are you, Conky? All right, let's do this here. Whoops, sorry. Uh, let's uh, shrink this window down dramatically. Why is Conky not starting up here? Did do we have? Um, ta -da -ta -da. Yeah, let's remove that. There we go. There's Conky. Conky is actually um, it's it's this is a classic, and I'm going to use that. And uh, I'm not even sure if I'm saying that in a way that makes it sound like it's a really good thing or not. But Conky is a system monitor that has been around for a heck of a long time. I mean, this one has been around like literally forever. It, it's like from the days of the dinosaurs. Because this is like an X window. Uh, this is like you know classic X window system monitor, and uh, Conkey is um, Conkey is uh, is available for like a, you're going to find it in every distribution. Uh, so it's not like it's something that's actually hard to find. Um, but there are a whole bunch of uh, setups. You you saw me removing the .conkeyrc file. 
And that's because at some point I tried to configure it to do some kind of transparent uh, forward on my background. And um, it just, it, like I tried all sorts of funky things with it. And eventually I broke it. So that's why the Conky RC, um, why I removed it so that I could show you this. But it is one of those things that um, can sit on pretty much any desktop. And there are a million configuration options for it. So it may or may not be the thing that, um, that you are looking for, but, um, but it, it is certainly uh, one of the ones that's worth taking a look at. Again, there are like tons and tons of these process monitors. And uh, Conky is a great tool. Yes, I, I, it is. It is. There was actually a, oh man, this is going to drive me crazy now. I can't think about it. But there was actually a great um, screen widget in which you could load Conky. And I'm trying to remember what the heck is it was called. And I'm going to hate myself because I'm going to remember it as soon as I finish the show today. But um, I'm drawing a complete blank. But there was a there was a really nice one that you could have that would live on the side of the screen there, and um, I'm drawing a complete blank. Okay, um, hopefully maybe maybe it'll come back to me before we end this today. So the other thing that I wanted to do today. So anyway, there we go. Process monitors. There are tons and tons of them, um, and uh, hopefully there's one in there that is for you. Uh, if I had to pick. My favorite, like I said, in terms of how often I use it, it would probably HTOP. If I had to pick the one that I keep forgetting that it even exists, um, but nevertheless, I think it is a great full screen monitor or a great monitor if you're going to run it on your full screen, uh, that would be Glances. Remember Glances? That would be the one. That would be the other one that I would take a look at. That would be my next favorite in line. Um, but HTOP is the one that, without thinking, it's the one that I typically uh, bring up and, um, and start working with. So there you go. Anyway, so now it's time to move to our Linux distribution you've never heard of before. And um, uh, I never heard of this one before today. Um, well, by the way, here are the words, here are the lyrics to Sunshine of Your Love. I got to tell you guys a secret, okay? And you can't tell anyone, all right? All right, this is, this is a secret. You can't tell anyone. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the secret by uh, opening up the uh, the uh, OBS window. Where is my OBS window? Oh yeah, it's over here. I'm gonna open up my OBS window and I'm gonna transition over here and I'm gonna show you something that's uh, so. Don't laugh, don't laugh. You, see, you know what these things are? You know what these things are? Hmm. The guitar picks. Um, three weeks ago, uh, I decided after threatening that I was gonna do it for a million years, I decided to. Start taking guitar lessons. So um, one of my um, one of my practice pieces is uh, "Sunshine of Your Love" uh, by Eric Clapton in Cream. You know, Cream, aka Cream. So there you go. So um, so that's my uh, that's that's I'm 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 telling you something that you know. Uh, no, that's that's not Mastodon. No, that's not what I want to do. Uh, oh, there we are. There we go. Today we're going to take a look at Endless OS. Endless OS. Um, and um, I ran across this one because uh, somebody somebody wrote up something on it, and I thought, huh, I've never heard of this one. And apparently, it's designed uh, with the educational market in mind, and uh, it has the as you can see there, it's as simple as a smartphone. It has an interface, presumably, that looks a lot like a smartphone in terms of just icons, you know, icons that you mix and match and move around on your desktop. And as you probably know, as you probably know, here, let me get rid of these monitors here. Um, monitor, remove the monitor. There we go. Yeah, 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 I see. As you can tell, I'm not much of an icon guy. <laughs> I don't have a lot of icons on my desktop ever. So let's go virtual machine manager. We're going to do very... Uh, I'm just going to stick with Virtual Machine Manager. And uh, last week we looked at FreeSpire, so we're just going to we're just going to create a new machine here, forward, and we're going to use the ISO. I'm going to say browse, and in my ISO folder there, there is EOS Endless OS Endless OS. We're going to say we're going to use that one. And I'm going to say forward, and uh, I don't know. I got lots of memory. Let's give it. Um, I don't know. I could, let's give it 4096. Why not? Uh, a couple of CPUs, and I'm gonna say forward, and I can create a 20 gig image, and we're gonna call this one endless, my endless OS, my endless OS. I, I apologize for the musical interlude there. There we go, finished. 
All right, let's do this. Um, all right, let's booting from CD DVD and uh, let's take a look. Endless OS, endless OS. All right, it's a nice start. Nice clean start there. All right, we're gonna let it boot and uh, I may start the install, but I will probably then not let it go through all the way through the install, so. Endless OS. Let's switch to um, let's switch to full screen here and take a look at it on full screen. All right. Nice background, nice drop, and uh, yes, we're gonna go with English next. All right. So try Endless OS by running it. Uh, reformat this computer. Try a reformat by running it from the USB stick. I'm not running it from a USB stick. I'm running. All right. Let's just say try it, and I can say next. And uh, please read the term. Sure, I accept this. Uh, blah blah, whatever. Uh, start using Endless OS. You're ready to try it. Anything that you download will be lost forever. All right. I have been warned, and now we're waiting. All right. Okay. So there you go. So I can. So you can see right off the bat that this is very much. Uh, they're definitely taking this uh, smartphone. Uh, approach. In fact, it looks kind of iPhone-ish. Uh, if I were to uh, try to pick one smartphone type over another, um, let's take a look down here. We have uh, oh, there's the App Center. That's interesting. A reformat that would be for installing Internet. Let's take a look at Internet. What do we use for Internet? Uh, we are using this. Looks like Chromium. So it looks like we're using Chromium for the browser by default in there. And I'm just going to give it a second to uh, try to pull up something, although this is a little bit slow at the moment. We're keeping in mind, of course, I'm running this inside a virtual machine. <clears throat> uh, WhatsApp, uh, this is likely going to be the... Um, uh, let's go take a look again. Um, what if I click down here? Oh, okay, interesting. All right, does that drag down? No, you just click it. Search Google for more. Um, what if we just type something like video? All right, so it brings up the, so if I just type something, if I just start typing here, it will show me, um, oh, there we go. There we go, we finally have Chrome Extension Exploration Center, Adblock Plus, oh, I hate Adblock. I hate, I, I, I wanna decide when I wanna see ads. I don't actually enjoy having ad blockers previously installed. And uh, I think of ads. This is this is one of this is one of those things for me. Okay, I could be totally wrong on this, but I see ads as kind of an implicit contract between you and the people that are providing you free content. Um, some of this stuff is expensive. It's difficult to offer. There's got to be some way of making money. And until we come up with something better, and that doesn't mean I like this, by the way. But until we come up with something better, ads are kind of the way that we pay for some of this free content. So. I have a lot of trouble with ad block for that reason, but that is me. That does not have to be you. That is specifically me. Oh, this is interesting. Google Discover. Um, I'm going to have to take a look at that at some point because I don't know exactly what that is. Um, obviously, for word processing and so forth, curiosity. What is curiosity? Duolingo. Duolingo. I'm guessing that that is a language app, although I'll be honest. I don't actually know. Learn a language for free. Duolingo. This is actually a link. These are actually, some of these are actually links to websites. I'm assuming that YouTube is not an app. That's an, yeah, exactly. We're opening up the browser and going directly to that. And if we go social here, are we going to do the same thing here? Yeah, we're opening up. We're not opening up apps. These are just links to various places. So I suppose in that respect, it's very cell phone-ish. Uh, documents, that is going to be our file manager. Let's open up the app center. Actually, let's open up the show apps here. Um, I'm going to close that and I'm going to show apps. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I guess those are the apps that are currently, ah, those are open apps. Those are open apps that we're looking at there. Okay. Interesting. All right. Let's go to the app center and take a look and see what, um, um, featured applications, Crick, Crick buzz, uh, learn how to provide the best care. It's a, a surprising number of these things. See, this is actually fascinating. Some of these things seem to be just links to other websites in this featured section. Bringing prehistory to life as you know it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this out right now just for a laugh and see what happens. 
dinosaurs download really um okay i'm i'm curious <laughs> there's a dinosaur app out there um for linux i did not know this i would have thought this was just opening up a web page installing zero percent all right obviously this is going to take a while so let's just go back here and take a look at this uh learning this the app manager is this is really a different presentation this is not like anything i've seen before okay installed so if i click on it now and i go launch 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 i have clicked launch there we go interesting interesting uh let's say um let's let's minimize this for a second and minimize this as well what about terminal what, what about a terminal window all right let's open up the terminal window and uh i'm gonna go ps ax i'm gonna grep for grep dash i dino uh endless dinosaurs app greaser i this is totally new to me um and this has a very android feel to it com.endlessm.dinosaurs.en i'm gonna have to spend a little bit more time uh, checking this particular distribution out because this is uh raising more questions than i expected by taking a look at it very very interesting all right let's go back to the dinosaur app there dinosaur era two items uh, continental drift um I'm not saying this is spectacular by any stretch of the imagination, but it is definitely, uh, it's definitely unusual. Definitely unusual. Let's go back in here to the App Center. Um, this is not organized the way that I would have expected it. Let's go to, I don't know, um, let's go to, actually, let's go to Games. This would be an interesting place to take a look at this. Games and um, see what sorts of things are showing up. GNOME Screens, uh, Genius, Mateo, Translate, um, I wouldn't have thought of some of these as games. Bracero certainly doesn't sound like a game to me. Especially since it's an app for burning DVDs. Uh, what if I say multimedia? 3D Cab, Adobe Flash Player, yuck. Um, audio Editor, um, Cumulo Nimbus podcast app. This is really, really interesting. Um, I wonder if these are all app images and so forth. Huh. I'm gonna have to spend a little bit of time actually exploring this one because this is actually far, this is much different than what I expected. Scratch, uh, my, my son has actually done some programming, uh, has been learning some programming using Scratch. Um, but I'm kind of wondering if these are all app image files and this is how stuff is being installed. Let's, uh, let's minimize, I'm gonna go control alt here, uh, control alt. Hello, control alt, control alt. All right, what if I go alt tab? There we go, that'll work. Um, and if we go back to the uh, preloaded with content, uh, 100 free apps that don't require an internet, internet connection, that's very interesting. By the way, if you go to the download uh, site for this one, there is actually an amazingly, like there's a huge, huge download. There's actually an English full distribution. You might not actually want to do that. I downloaded the uh, basic multi-language here, but the full 15.22 gigabytes, uh, that's got to be one of the biggest OS installers that I have seen in a heck of a long time. Um, FAQ. Remember, this is without a net. This is without a net. I don't always know what I'm looking at before I take a look at it. You know, um, I will definitely spend more time taking a look at this thing. This is really quite fascinating. Really quite fascinating. Um, but uh, definitely not what I expected in many ways. So uh, definitely going to have to take a look at this one in the future and see how this thing actually works out. So there we go. Endless OS. And um, very, you know, I can understand the, the you know, smartphone-ish sort of things. There we go. Dinosaurs has arrived. I can move it around like I can on a desktop. Let's throw it inside games. There we go. We've got a games folder with the, um, in fact, there we go. Social, social. Let's just throw in Facebook into social here. Facebook into social. There we go. That is, yeah, very, very smartphone-ish in the way that this thing is organized. Um, let's see if I can drag this over and create a secondary desktop. Not the way that I would have expected it. I would expect to be able to drag that off to the side and create another one. 
Uh, can I put it anywhere on the screen? No, I can't just put it anywhere on the screen, but I can reorganize it. There we go. Fascinating, Endless OS, that is Endless OS, and that is where I am going to leave that for today. I'm gonna go Alt-Tab so I can jump back out to where I was, and then I'm gonna go back over here, and I'm gonna say thank you for joining me, and um, I've, I've got something that I can explore, and I hopefully, hopefully you've got something that you can explore, and um, I hope that the tour of process monitors was useful. Remember, if you do want me to cover something, if it's something that you'd like me to try, uh, something that you'd like me to take through its paces, even if it's just so that I can stumble over it and go, huh, because apparently the uh, real discoveries aren't made by somebody going, Eureka, but by somebody going, hmm, I didn't expect that, or that's strange, that sort of thing. That's where discoveries happen, when you just sort of play around and try things out. Um, if you have an opportunity and you don't already know this, uh, the video will show up later in here. The video will show up later. It'll be in the Cooking with Linux playlist over here. Uh, sh please share it widely. Friends, family, neighbors, enemies, um, dogs, cats, fish, hamsters, your pets, everybody. Uh, let them know about it. And please, uh, you can't see the subscribe button because this is my channel, but click on the subscribe button and, and become a subscriber. You can also find me on Twitter, twitter.com, uh, WFTL. I'm WFTL on twitter.com. I'm on Google+. Plus. I'm on Facebook. I'm all over the place. Uh, I'm on Mastodon. I'm on Mastodon as well. So uh, please take a chance or take the time to uh, share this widely and invite other people next time and uh, let me know. Let me know what you think and uh, what else you'd like to happen. I thank you very much for being here and um, I'll see you next week on Cooking with Linux with Ethernet. Cheers. Oh, that's right. I got to find the window now that I was at and, um, and maybe find out what all that network traffic around my house was. Hmm. That's it. I'm done. Bye.